If you use a Bluetooth presentation remote and you want to use it with another application, maybe the key mappings don't quite work with whatever it is you want to use it for, I'm going to show you how you can quite easily remap those keys for the Mac in this video. Hello and welcome to Take One Tech. My name's Alec. And uh, yeah, so in this video, we're talking about these little presentation remotes. They are great for obviously doing presentations with and things like that. Uh, but you may find cases where you want to use it with some software where the keys for some reason don't work. And that is the key to thinking about this is it is just a tiny little keyboard, really. Each one of these keys, uh, these buttons represents a keystroke and the default mapping for these uh, uh, presentation remotes is that the forwards and backwards arrows relate to the page up and page down buttons on your keyboard. So when you're in Microsoft PowerPoint or Apple's Keynote, then if you uh, press the page up and down button on your keyboard, it will advance or go to the previous uh, slide. Uh, and so that's all you're basically doing with this. I, I know you can also use the arrow keys as well on the keyboard to move between slides in, uh, in those applications, uh, but that is the specific keystrokes that are uh, being simulated by these little remotes. Now, this uh, whole video is being made because the question was asked in the Ecamm Live Facebook group by Aaron Labauer. I hope I've pronounced that right. <laughs> and uh, what he was asking was, if you're if you're using a presentation uh, PDF, for example, in uh, Ecamm Live, uh, how can you get this to control the slides or the PDF pages in Ecamm Live? Now, I did a whole video about how you can use this uh, with Ecamm Live, um, and I'll leave a link, obviously, to that up in the top corner. Uh, but the way that I was suggesting using it in there was just simply to advance between different scenes and to change scenes in Ecamm Live. And I suppose I should step back a bit. If you're not familiar with Ecamm Live, it is a live video production production environment for either recording videos or going live out to the world through live streaming uh, and it's what I use to make all of these videos and it's a great application for the Mac and I can highly recommend it if you want a free trial go to uh, takeonetech.io slash Ecamm and you'll be able to uh, try it all out there but it is a really wonderful piece of software and incidentally I should also mention if you are using Ecamm already and aren't familiar with the Ecamm Live Facebook group that I just mentioned uh, where this question was asked then go to facebook.com slash groups slash Ecamm uh, and there you'll be able to join a community full of uh, wonderful people just like you doing great things with their Ecamm Live software so highly recommend that. Uh, but anyway, just coming back to the question, <laughs> instead of going off on several different tangents, I've gone on so many tangents, I've come right back around to where I was. So let me uh, just show you what we're talking about. And to do that, I'm going to go into demo mode on Ecamm Live so that you can see my whole screen now. I've uh, just given it a little bit of a hint, actually, of one thing that I do want to mention uh, before I go on to the explanation about this is if you do want to advance PDF slides in Ecamm Live, then you can go into the, uh, and if you, you're using Stream Deck, then it is actually built in as one of the Ecamm Live controls in there. So just go to Ecamm Live in the Stream Deck and come down here, you'll see there is a key command here for previous PDF page and next PDF page. So you can just add those in as buttons to your Stream Deck as well. But I'm getting a little bit ahead because what I wanted to show you was how you can actually add PDFs <laughs> into Ecamm Live. So if I come over to here, I've created a new blank scene. And then what I'm gonna do is I've got a PDF on my desktop. And if I just drag any PDF onto the uh, window there, then that uh, sort of embeds it into the scene. And then what you can do is you can use the uh, uh, left and right arrows to scroll through that PDF. So I can just use left and right to scroll through the PDF like that. Now, if I was to press the little buttons on my remote, let me come back to uh, this scene so you can see. <laughs> if I press the buttons on this remote, then what that will do is actually just move down through the scenes. So currently we're on this main scene. My next scene is a screen sharing scene. So if I just click on the little button like that, then you can see it just advances to the next scene. And if I come to my PDF uh, that I've just created, this new scene and I press the little button, then you can see it just changes the scene again. It doesn't actually move this, the uh, pages of the PDF. So that is because, as I say, we are currently mapped to uh, uh, 
uh, page up and page down in Ecamm Live moves between uh, scenes, whereas uh, what we want is the left and right arrows because that is what changes the pages of the PDF. So the way that we do that is uh, we're going to use a an application. Now this isn't a free application, uh, but I highly recommend it. I'm going to be doing a whole series of videos all about this app because it is one of my basically power apps that I use. One of the three core apps that uh, is at the center of a lot of the sort of automation I do that's sort of third party. There is also, I'll, I'll, let me let me say there's five then. <laughs> Automator by Apple, Apple Script by Apple, soon to be Shortcuts actually, so there's six Shortcuts, I use that on iOS, uh, but that's coming to the Mac as well. But the, the three that I would say uh, that I use quite heavily are uh, Keyboard Maestro, which is this one I'm going to tell you. Uh, also, um, uh, I'm forgetting now. I've confused myself by adding three more to the list. <laughs> uh, text Expander and also Hazel. So I'll be doing videos about all of these, but uh, I've just already mentioned the app, haven't I? It is where's my screen sharing on this one it's keyboard maestro so i'll leave a link obviously down in the description but if you go to keyboardmaestro.com uh, that's where you can get it and the cost of it is uh let me just double check uh da, da, da. i should have done this in advance shouldn't i let me just go to buy now and uh, i will see how much it is <laughs> 36 dollars uh and it's, it's money well spent when you look at all the different things that you can do from it. And there you go, it's from Stairways Software. But as I say, I'll leave a link in the uh, description. There is a free trial of it, so you can have a look at that. And as I say, I'll be doing a whole series of videos all about it. So you'll be able to uh, be able to judge for yourself how useful it is. It does actually pair really nicely with Stream Deck because you can set up all sorts of different macros in it and then you can link those all to Stream Deck. But uh, I'm doing a lot of talking without having actually shown it to you, haven't I? So let's get on with that. Right, so here is the app and uh, I should just mention once you've downloaded it you will have to go through that process of enabling it in system preferences so that's the usual thing where it will say take you through to the uh, privacy section of uh, system preferences and you'll need to unlock, unlock that with your password and then it will just ask you to go and make sure you've given it access to because uh, it is basically going to take control of things like keyboard shortcuts and things like that so that's just something to be aware of during the installation process but once you've got it up uh, it's basically um, <laughs> a, a, a way for you to program all sorts of different macros or keystrokes or things like that um, that are system wide and there's too many things to actually cover exactly what it can do all in uh, one little demo so as I say I will be making a whole series of videos all about uh, keyboard maestro and how I use it and some of the nice little tricks that you can use but this sort of thing that we're going to talk about now this remapping of keystrokes is something that's really useful and uh, comes in handy in lots of different uh, situations but let's give you the example of the one that we're looking at. So down here on the uh, left hand side you've got uh, different groups of uh, macros and things that you've programmed. So I have a lot of different uh, sort of groupings for the macros that I've got. Uh, once you're in a particular folder you'll see all of the macros that you've programmed for that uh, particular uh, group in the uh, in the list there and then you'll also see something related to so this is actually the name and things like that for the particular group that you're looking at but let's go through the process so let me call this one uh, I'm going to call this one ecamm demo uh, ecamm demo so there we go we've given it a name now we want this to work the the things that we add in here we want them to work just in ecamm live because we're going to reprogram the keys for this little uh, uh, presentation remote for when you're using ecamm live but we don't want them to actually affect when you're in other applications so presumably when you're using powerpoint or microsoft keynote you still want these to work as uh, intended so we only want to affect ecamm live so this group of uh, applications here or this group of um, macros that we're going to create in fact there's only going to be two in there uh, is for um, ecamm live so we've want to have it enabled so that yes it will be active and working now here you can select whether you want it to work in all applications uh, or a specific application so if i come down here and say uh, available in these applications so uh, you or you could say available in basically all except these specific applications uh, available when these applications are running so you can see we've got these different options well we're just wanting to use it in these applications and then you get to add in all the applications that you want it to work in so now we've got this little button and so we click here go to ecamm live so now this basically this group is going to work in ecamm live you can also select if it's going to work in uh, 
certain windows or uh, it, you know depending on what you're doing but for us we'll just have available in all windows uh, because it's just going to be whenever the window is active basically and is it always activated or activated uh, for one action when so there's all different ways that you can define these so but Fortunately, we're just keeping things simple at the moment, so I won't dig into all of these different options for this case. So we want it to basically, this group of uh, macros, these two macros for forwards and backwards, to work in Ecamm Live. Now, you can come down here uh, to where it says macros, and we're going to add in our first one. And this, we're going to call this one uh, uh, PDF forward. So... Uh, call it what you want but <laughs> pdf page forward now uh, so there we can say triggered by any of the following when ecamm is uh, e ecamm live is at the front so we're going to add a trigger in now uh, the way you can add triggers is there are some sort of simple shortcuts to triggers built in but I could go into this little plus button at the bottom and that would bring up a whole window of triggers and there are lots of different categories of different types of triggers and things like that uh, and for each one of these little groups there's all things related to files, browser control and so on uh, but if I get all actions you can see different things that we can do uh, but as I say they are also uh, listed as little shortcuts so new trigger and it's the first one actually, hotkey trigger. So that is gonna be triggered when uh, a key is pressed basically. And that is the one that we want in this case. But as you can see, there's lots of different things like gesture triggers, uh, things like that, application triggers, clipboard, so on and so forth. Uh, but we just want this key hotkey trigger. And so now it's asking us for the hotkey. Now this is the uh, PDF forward button that we want to program. And as I mentioned, the left and right arrows are basically page up and page down. So what we can do is we can just, the box is already highlighted. So page down would be the forward. So if I click that page down uh, and then uh, down here, um, we don't want this by script and it says we'll execute the following action. So what action do we want it to do? Well, we actually want it to basically just simulate the keystroke uh, right arrow so if I click on new action uh, and then we can choose it from there but we can also uh, in fact let me come down here and do type a keystroke there we go and I can drag that across so I've just taken the type a keystroke and dragged it across and then the keystroke that we want is if you click the little down arrow and then we say what do we want we want the right arrow so now basically what that's saying is uh, if we just run through this sort of little logic again, uh, we've called this PDF forward. It's only gonna work in Ecamm Live. And when the hotkey page down is pressed, it is gonna simulate the keystroke of right arrow. Okay, so that is actually done now. What we're gonna do now is just quickly do that again for a PDF pre previous, like that. And then as I said before, we just come to new hotkey trigger this one now is going to be the page up key and we want a new action is type a keystroke and this time we want the uh, left arrow. So now we've got our two keys that have been mapped and we'll close that down. And that is it. <laughs> but don't take my word for it. Let me actually just demonstrate this for a moment. So if I come out of uh, here or rather come into my uh, demo mode. And then I'll come back to that screen that we had with our PDF, which was this one. So now, with a bit of luck, <laughs> uh, in fact, what I need to do, let me just quickly, just so that you can see. Well, I just paused there for a moment to uh, actually add an image into this, uh, <laughs> into this scene so that you could see what I was doing with my little uh, clicker <laughs> in my presentation remote. So now what you'll notice is as I press these keys, then it does actually move the pages of the PDF, which was the question that was asked. And that is how that you remap your uh, keystrokes from your presentation remote using Keyboard Maestro. Uh, if you found this useful, then don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel and turn on notifications so that you get alerted the moment that I make any new videos. Uh, and as I say, I will be making a whole series of videos all about Keyboard Maestro. And if you think that Keyboard Maestro is powerful, wait until you can uh, pair it with uh, Stream Deck as well. So I'll be doing a whole series about uh, integrating it with Stream Deck as well. So uh, that's all for this video, but don't go anywhere because as always, there's more great videos coming up next. When I've done the playlist, by the way, I'll add the playlist to the bottom for my uh, keyboard maestro. Have a great day, everyone.